Hi, and welcome to this QuickBooks training video from Tracy Bressler CPA. We're going to take a couple of minutes today and we're going to talk about setting up scheduled payroll liability payments in QuickBooks. This is a feature that's been available for several years and it's in all of the currently supported versions of QuickBooks. But it's not a required feature and some people still use the old method um, that we used to use to make payroll liability payments when actually once it's set up, this new method is much easier to use. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to do that by starting the Employee Center. And then from these tabs across the top here, I'm going to pick Payroll. And this middle section right here is where the scheduled liability payments will show once we have them set up. Now to set them up, I'm going to click on the down arrow on this button and pick Edit Payment Due Dates and Methods. Now it will take just a moment for it to uh, start the um, payroll setup program and take us to the uh, section of that program that will set up tax payments for us. The reason that it's so much easier this new way is a 941 payment, for instance, if you know what that is, it will just show us one line. And we can click on that one line and make that payment, whereas the old method, we had to select each payroll item and it would require five payroll items in order to make that payment and so we'd have to do those five check marks and remember which ones those were. Alright, so here we are. Payroll setup program is open. Tax payments, schedule payments, so this is where we want to be. I'll click on the continue button and that will open a window and it's the first of four windows that QuickBooks is going to have us fill out. Now we're not going to cover electronic payments in this video so we are preparing paper checks for um, our uh, payroll liabilities, or I guess we could do it electronically, but we're still inserting it into QuickBooks as a check would be. And so get, uh, Great Statewide Bank is our vendor. Now, the, the tax that we are looking at paying and setting up in this window is Federal 940. 940, that is Federal Unemployment Insurance. and this is where we set the frequency and you see QuickBooks has set a default for us here saying well quarterly is the usual frequency for this tax and we can accept that that is the default and that's what's going to be correct for most people and so the next window opens now the next window you see up the top there is a payment schedule for 941 it would be a 943 if you're um, an agricultural employer Again, state, Great Statewide Bank is our vendor. Now, our payment frequency could be a couple of different things here. And uh, if you are already doing payroll, you will know what your frequency is for making those payroll tax payments. Uh, if you're starting a, uh, a payroll new in your QuickBooks file, then in the documentation you get from the IRS when you get your uh, em uh, employer ID number and so forth, will tell you what frequency uh, you should use to start with. So for our sample company, Rock Castle Construction here, let's say we need to choose this one, that uh, after each payroll we are a semi-weekly depositor. So I will select that and then click Next. Now we'll go to the state uh, with, uh, withholding taxes, payroll taxes. And we're using the state of California here. So in the state of California we're going to have two windows and the first one is the California Unemployment Insurance and the Employment Training Tax. Now the vendor that we're going to print the check to is Employment Development Department. Here is our number for the EDD. This all pulls directly from QuickBooks. We've already had that set up there. And then what uh, pay frequency? Well again, just as with federal unemployment insurance, the normal frequency is quarterly. So we're going to leave that at that setting and look at our last and fourth uh, window. And this is for California state income tax withholding and disability insurance. Our vendor is going to be the same, the number with the vendor is going to be the same, all that information pulls in here automatically. I just have to set the frequency and let's say we need to do that on a monthly basis. And then if I click finish then we are complete with those four windows and those are are all set up so all of our payroll taxes are all set up as scheduled payments. 
Now you could see we could continue on here and set up any benefit or other payments that we had like wage garnishments, um, health insurance, retirement plans, those kinds of things. Not everyone finds the scheduled payments for those kinds of things useful and we're not going to cover that here since if you did find that useful the process is the same as what we've just covered anyway. So we're just going to do our taxes and I'm going to click on finish later. This will bring us back to our uh, employee center and you'll see this section now is uh, has a number of lines in it telling us the due date, when our payment is due, what type of tax we'd be paying with that payment, and uh, we've set up the method to be checked, and what period it would be for. Now you see in the sample company here, somebody uh, forgot to make the payments for the uh, California unemployment insurance here, and the federal 940, which we said was federal uh, unemployment insurance here. So those should have been made for the third quarter, and they should have been made by October 31st, and that wasn't done. You can see that there are also some overdue payments from um, November payrolls. So the overdue payments show as red. So it kind of jumps out at you there, and you know you have an issue that you need to take care of. The payments that are current or are due in the future are in uh, blue. This still gives you the due date, so we have here 1217 is our uh, next current due date, and again, all the way across it tells us those things that we'll be paying and how much. So if I wanted to go back and say, you know, I really need to pick up this 941 payment here that was due on November 16th and get that taken care of, all I need to do is put a check mark by that, click on the view pay, and there's my check, all ready to go. There's nothing I need to do to the check. It's ready to be printed. I've already set it up in the past to, uh, to print. Um, I could change that here, of course, but I'm going to go ahead and print the check. And so all I need to do is save and close. And so it saves that. It gives me this little screen that would let me print from right here. I'm just going to close that. And then you see that line is gone on our list here. And uh, so, we, you know, we could go on to the next one at that point. So it's going to keep track for me. These numbers, you see we've got payments due all the way out to January 31st here. And those numbers will change as we process more payrolls and those tax numbers change that we need to pay up until the time that they are due and that we need to pay those. And then the, uh, the correct number will show there is we will have done all the payrolls that would have affected that number. So I hope this is helpful to you. You can see why this is really a much easier way to pay your payroll liabilities. So if I were you, I would take a few minutes and set this up in your QuickBooks file, and it will make that process a little bit easier going down the road. I hope you have found this informative, and I hope you'll take the time to take a look at the other QuickBooks training videos that we have on our website as well. Thanks.